when the I am everything goes, the I am comes. When the I am goes, reality alone remains. Can we inquire into that? Yes, but I'd like to add a stage. You said when the I am something goes, the I am everything comes. I am somebody goes. I am somebody or something goes. Mm -hmm. The I am everything comes. So I, I'd like to add a, a stage in there, which is, is an important stage. When the I am something goes, the I am nothing comes. Not yet the I am everything. Mm -hmm. We go from thinking and feeling, I am something, that is, I am a body-mind. And when we explore what we are, we realize, no, I am the awareness, or the aware presence, which knows the body and the mind. In other words, I am not a thing, a body and the mind. I am that which knows that thing. But I myself am not made out of a thing, not made out of a body or a mind. In other words, I am not a thing, I am nothing. Yes. So we go from thinking and feeling I am something to realizing that I am not a thing, I am nothing. I am just this open, aware presence. And then when we explore this nothing, this no thingness that I am, and find out what we, this presence, know, really know about ourself. We discover that we don't have limits and that we are ever present. So the discovery that we are unlimited or infinite, not finite, not made out of something perceivable that has a, a limit. That's the infinite, infinite, not limited nature of awareness. And we discover that I am ever present. I'm not in time. I'm, I'm eternally now. So awareness realizes its infinite and eternal nature from the point of view of a mind that believes in the reality of things it is said to be nothing I am not a thing in fact awareness is not nothing it's presence and awareness that's quite a lot but from the point of view of a mind that only knows things it is said that what I am is nothing so as a concession to the mind that believes in the reality of things, let's say provisionally that what I am is nothing, not a thing. Now, the next stage, when we revisit our experience of apparent things, that is of the mind, the body and the world, from this new perspective in which we have discovered that we are not a thing, and ask ourselves, what is my relationship, my awareness? What is awareness's relationship with these apparent things now, the apparent objects of the mind, the body, and the world? And as we look into them, we find that awareness is not just the witnessing presence in the background, knowing these apparent objects from a distance, but it is in fact the very substance of these apparent things. All we know of the world is the perceiving of it. We don't actually know a world, we just know perception. And how close is perception to the one that knows it? Ask yourself now. All you know of this room is the seeing of it. Yes. All you know is the experience of seeing. In fact, you don't know a room as it is normally conceived. When I say as it is normally conceived, I mean as it is normally conceived as a separate independent object, 
made out of matter. We don't experience such a room. We just experience the experience of seeing. Now, how close is seeing to yourself? And when I say yourself, I mean the one that knows it, the one that is aware of it. How close are these two? The experience of seeing and the one that knows it. They're inseparable. That they're, they're, they're not even inseparable, they're closer than inseparable. There aren't two things there in the first place, yes? It's the same experience. Mm -hmm. But you're right, that, that they're inseparable. That, that there are not two things. Ah, Dvaita, there are not two things there. So this we express by saying, I, this no thingness, am the substance of all seeming things. So here we've moved from the position, I am not a thing, I am just this empty awareness, to realizing I am the substance, not just the knower of all seeming things, not just the witnessing consciousness in the background, but the actual substance of all seeming things. So we've gone from a position, I am something, to I am nothing, and from I am nothing, to I am everything. Yes? So now, in each of these positions, we're presuming the existence of things. Each statement makes reference to a thing. In the first position, I am something. In the next position, I am not a thing. In the third position, I am all things. But now, where are these things that we are referring to? We've already seen that we never experience a, a thing as such, yes? And yet we are making a statement about ourself based on the presumption that things are real. First of, first of all, I am one of those things, then I am none of those things, and then I am all of those things. But where are these things that we are referring to? So even I am everything is not true. It's truer than I am nothing. And in turn I am nothing is truer than I am something. So each statement is truer than the previous one. It gets closer, each statement comes closer to the truth of our experience. And as such is valid. But even the statement I am, noth I am everything is not true. So then we drop the, the all things, because we don't experience things. Awareness doesn't experience things, it just experiences the, no, the knowing of things. Not the knowing of things, but just knowing. Awareness just experiences awareness. I am. Hence the everything falls off and we're left with, with I am. And then this I am. that the statement that I am is a statement I am present. But even here there is a subtle suggestion in the statement I am present that, that there is something called not present, not being. I am making reference to myself as I am presence in contrast to something else that is not. But there is no such thing as not being. There is nothing that is not present. As Parmenides said, that which is never ceases to be. That which is not never comes into existence. So even the idea of presence or being is made in subtle reference to, to a, a, a belief that we have that there is something that disappears, something that, that, that was real and has now vanished. But it's not true. That is never experienced. So then the am vanishes and we're just left with I. But, but even I, what does I mean without a reference to something that might not be I? It doesn't mean anything, it's an abstract sound. It, it means nothing. It does, it, it's e even the I refers to something which is different from the not I. So then here the mind falls silent. It cannot describe the nature 
of reality. It just doesn't have the language. It's not the right tool. 